BAM Crack and Pow Wow? A new course focusing on indigenous peoples represented in graphic novels has arrived this summer at the University of Manitoba. Nigan Away with Dam James Sinclair is offering a course called Super Savages and Sovereign Traces Introduction to Indigenous Graphic Novels. Now, for those who might not know, the Oxford English Dictionary defines a graphic novel as a narrative work in which the story is conveyed to the reader using sequential art, either in experimental design or in a traditional comics format. Sinclair said the course is exploring graphic novels made by indigenous artists and graphic novels about indigenous peoples. The professor described graphic novels as a genre that is the most interesting and provocative form of indigenous literature out there today. Any cartoon, any image is inevitably about ourselves. So um, in the good and the bad. So we see an image and no matter what that image is, we project ourselves into that image. And when we see ourselves, it's all of those things that come in um, that not only come from our experience, but also what we've been told who we are. <laughs> And then the question then is, what happens next? Do we inherit that? Do we accept it? Do we think about it? Do we resist it? Um, and then do we create more images that are more reflective or that are um, provocative for us, that illustrate who we are as a complex people, as a changing people? Um, yeah, that, every image that we see reflects some part of who you, who you are as a person. And Sinclair talks about the long history here in North America of using sequential images to convey stories. Well, in fact, uh, graphic writing, graphic novels, if we're calling them that this week, are not new at all to the uh, Americas. We, our graphic images are tens of thousands of years old. If you look at um, the petroforms of Manitoba, rock, the rock paintings, um, even the uh, codices in Mexico, these are sequential art um, that are now defined as graphic novels, but thousands of years ago were documentations of history in creative and critical forms. Um, so Manitoba is one of the hubs, one of the centerpieces of North American written expression, and it's all graphic. So this is just this week, we're calling it graphic novels. I, when I started the course, um, we spent two days looking at graphic images throughout thousands of years, and how they've been classified as incomplete writing uh, in comparison with alphabetical writing. And of course, that's all, those, these are all arbitrary categories. Although Sinclair warns people not to take literature too literally. Literature is not a history book, right? It's not, literature is not intended to give you all the facts of history. And that's what I think people get caught up in is, does a piece of literature echo completely exactly what this ceremony is or what this moment in history is. That's not the job of literature. The job of literature is to challenge and think, uh, get us to think about what if or, or what can be. Um, so for me, I, as I tell my students all the time, I don't have answers, but I have questions. And questions are what the answers are. Graphic novels to be used in the course include Trickster, Tribal Force, The Life of Helen Biddy Osborne, Darkness Calls, among many others. Sinclair also spoke about two of the graphic novels he's currently using in the course, Scalped, along with Cowboys and Aliens. Well, Scalped is a, is a new graphic novel that's been very a popular bestseller. Um, and what I did is I purposely taught some graphic novels that are not done by Indigenous people to look at not only representations of, uh, of Native peoples historically, which are often considered to be stereotypes, which I think very much happens within this graphic novel, but also this is an interesting graphic novel because it's trying to insert Indigenous history um, specifically in Minneapolis amongst American Indian Movement and Wounded Knee in the 1970s, uh, um, as well as contemporary issues of casinos, um, sex, erotica, and um, violence and alcoholism. And I think there's some interesting things going on within this graphic novel that challenge mainstream perceptions. So it's often the mainstream seeing itself within an image and challenging itself. Um, sometimes in not the most uh, critical and complex ways that we would like, but I still think that it's provocative and interesting that, that it does. In much in the same way that I think Cowboys and Aliens, which I'm teaching now, does, does those things, but perhaps not as happy, uh, not as wide ranging as we would like, but then again, it is Hollywood. So <laughs> it is very formulaic. Um, I'd, we'd like to see more, but it is 
appealing to a mainstream that is often very cumbersome in their change. This course marks the first time that Sinclair has taught a full-fledged course as a university professor. He said that the toughest part was selling the idea as a plausible course and credits his department with taking the bold step. It's an intense course that takes up the entire morning and challenges the students about the use of images as icons. This is not a course in basket weaving, as Lana Jorgensen tells us. She's a Métis woman who will be graduating if she can successfully complete Sinclair's course. And to be honest, because this is my last course, I had sort of assumed that it would be small or a little less work, and I was hoping for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it hasn't turned out like that at all. For Tega Communications, I'm Trevor Grey Eyes, down here at St. John's College at the University of Manitoba.